Hello, today we're going to read chapter 9, Huck, Tom, and Friends. Some people say that Mark Twain's book, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, is the best book ever written in America. And they may be right. No question, it's very good reading. So are The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, The Prince and the Pauper, Puddin' Head Wilson, The Celebrated Jumping Frogs of Calavera County, and his other books and stories. Twain was like a storybook character himself. When he was an old man and had a bushy white hair and a bushy white mustache, he dressed in a rumpled white suit and went around the country telling stories and jokes. People came from far away just to hear him. He had a weary sense of humor, and you could never quite knew and you never quite knew if he was telling the truth or pulling your leg. When I was young, he said, I remembered everything about my life, whether it happened or not. Actually, when he was young, he had a, the kind of adventures that boys had in Mississippi River Town, and later he put most of them in his books. Mark Twain's real name was Samuel Langhorn Clemens. Sam Clemens grew up in Hannibal, Missouri, a town on the banks of a wide Mississippi River. Here's a scene from one of his books. The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Here, Tom convinces other boys to whitewash a fence for him. Back then, Hannibal was a sleepy place until river until a riverboat appeared. Then it came to life, and all the boys in Hannibal wanted to be riverboat pilots when they grew up. Sam became one for a while. Riverboats seem sometimes got stuck in shallow water. It was important that the pilot know the depth of the water. The call, Mark Twain, meant water two fathoms, 12 feet deep. That was safe water. In Hannibal, young Clem Sam Clemens was an apprentice to a printer. The printer was his brother. Sam gave his brother a hard time, but he did learn about the printing trade. And he began to write mostly humorous stories. Then he caught the wandering bug and drifted around the country. Later, he traveled to the Middle East and other faraway places and wrote about what he saw there. But before that, he tried to be a prospector to find silver in Nevada, where some people were striking it rich. He never hit a load of ore, but he did find a subject for his pen, the mining camps, and he turned them into a book called Roughing It. Then he was off to, for San Francisco, where he got a job as a newspaper reporter. There he wrote a story about a jumping frog, and it helped make him famous. California was a freewheeling place in those just after the war years. Cattle ranching and fruit growing were replacing mining as a source of income. And Nevada silver, pouring in from the fabulous... Comstock load was making San Francisco rich. That city was the literary capital of the West. It was a good place for a young writer to be. Mark Twain had a way of writing that made people chuckle and then realized that he really had something serious to say. And what he kept saying was that this land in America was pretty terrific, but that its promise, the offer, to offer freedom and opportunity to all was not being met. There was unfairness in the land, like the unfairness of segregation and child labor. Americans were becoming too concerned with making money. The nation was forgetting its ideals. Mark Twain and his writer friend Charles Dudley Warner named the years after the Civil War the Gilded Age, which was a name inspired by a verse from Shakespeare, which says, to gild refined gold is wasteful and ridiculous excess. Twain believed he lived in a time of ridiculous excess. He was right. In the after the Civil War years, there was a lot of glitter and gaudiness. People were making money and spending it on show-off things. When Mark Twain wrote Huckleberry Finn, he created two heroes, a slave, Jim, and a boy, Huck who were both searching for freedom. It is a funny book and an adventure story too, but really it's about 
the wonder of simple things, a friendship of a great river and the wish to be free. Huckleberry Finn changed the direction of American literature. Huck Finn's voice is the voice of a real American boy as it might have been in the, heard in the 19th century Missouri town. Here is how the book begins. You don't know me. Without you have read a book by the name of The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, but that ain't no matter. The book was made by Mark Twain and he told the truth mainly. There was things which he stretched, but mainly he told the truth. A great 20th century American writer, Ernest Hemingway said, all modern American literature comes from one book by Mark Twain called Huckleberry Finn. There was nothing before. There has been nothing as good since. Sam Clemens spent his boyhood in the antebellum before the Civil War years. After the war, people like to think of the years as uncomplicated and idyllic, which means charming, charmingly simple, which wasn't quite true. If there had been no problems, there would have been no war. But for a boy in a river town, it seemed a mighty good time. The, that Missouri boy grew to be a famous man and one of the best writers in the country had ever produced. Mark Twain's writing made him rich, but he never got fancy ideas or forgot where he came from. He seemed to have a whole country tucked into the pockets of his white suit. Maybe it's because he had been everywhere from Hawaii to Connecticut, or maybe it was his youthful question and homespun vitality that surprised and delighted people. Even when he was an old man and looked like a polar bear, he could still think like a child, which isn't a bad thing. He wrote of the world honestly, directly, and with a lot of humor. He didn't ignore bad things, not at all. Sometimes he couldn't, he could get downright heavy about them, but mostly he made us think about who we are and what we want to be.